Lisa Costello is an assistant professor in the Departments of Internal Medicine and Pediatrics at West Virginia University in Morgantown, West Virginia. Dr. Costello serves on the Executive Committee of the American Academy of Pediatrics Section on Early Career Physicians, is the Vice President of the West Virginia Chapter of the West Virginia American Academy of Pediatrics. Her academic interests include advocacy, healthcare policy, social media, and improving communication with patients, healthcare professionals, and the public by utilizing technology and media to amplify advocacy and education. Please welcome Dr. Costello. I'm Lisa Costello. I'm a hashtag tweetiatrician, and I approve this message. It was too close to election day for me not to do that. I've always wanted to do that. And since I'm from West Virginia, I guess we'll have country roads bring us home here at PEDS 21. So I know we've talked a lot about technology, but anyone have an idea of what this is? What is this? It's a book. That's good. I know we're coming towards the end and we've talked a lot about tech, but it's actually my take on an encyclopedia. See, I was about seven or eight when I thought I wanted to become a pediatrician. I had just been to a well child check. I was a little nervous, but my pediatrician was caring, fun, understanding, really eased my fears. So when I got home, I went to our family's bookshelf, reached for the encyclopedia, and looked up what it meant to be a pediatrician. So, fast forward some 25 years later, and here I am, an actual pediatrician, with the opportunity to speak at the professional home of pediatrics, the American Academy of Pediatrics National Conference and Exhibition, PEDS 21. It's a humbling honor. Many of our patients today no longer wait to get home to look up the meaning of a pediatrician. They or their parent have likely already searched the meaning before they've left your office, your hospital room, or wherever you are having the opportunity to care for them. So let me just state for the record, I think books are very important and we need to have them. We just now have e-books and websites, blogs and social media. Information is more quickly accessible in those regards. As we've heard from today, from Chris as a parent, who wants to utilize tech for his family, or as we've heard with, with Kristen, that pediatricians or pediatric subspecialists are using telemedicine to reach patients far and wide. Technology is all around us and has certainly changed since I was a pediatric patient. How do we as pediatricians embrace this evolution and not only embrace it, but lead in innovations leveraging new technologies to transform child health. So each of you are probably thinking the same thing I'm thinking, which is, why is this person up here speaking to us about how we can lead in technology? I have no patents, I've not created any apps, and admittedly, I still call my IT help desk probably more than I should. But I think I'm up here speaking because I'm really like most of you. I have times where I'm skeptical of technology and how it's being utilized, but I've also found ways to embrace it and integrate it into my practice to improve care for children that I care for in the hospital and beyond. So as we've heard from the many wonderful dynamic speakers, including parents, leaders in our field of technology, Technology is all around us, and it's rapidly changing. It is the hope that each and every one of us will leave here today with at least one tangible item that helps us be the change and lead in innovations that will help improve the care of our patients and their families. For those who know me or perhaps follow me on social media, I'm a big sports fan. I even had the opportunity to play for my home state team, the West Virginia University Mountaineers. Now, I played center guard, center of the bench, guarding the water bottles. <laughs> but regardless of the level that I played of basketball, my coaches always encouraged me to learn one thing 
from every camp, practice, or game. So today, I challenge each of you, each and every one of us, to do the, th do, to do the same. Take one thing that you've learned today to leverage technology to transform child health. So I shared that I'm not a developer of apps, I certainly have not written any code, but I am a proud hashtag Tweetiatrician, doing my part to utilize social media to advance child health. I've used that space to network, advocate, and educate. When used effectively, social media can complement and strengthen already existing strategies to amplify awareness on a topic. I joined my first social space, Facebook, when I was an undergrad student. I then expanded my social presence at an American Academy of Pediatrics legislative conference five years ago when I decided to take the leap and join Twitter to better advocate for children. Since that time, I've also expanded my digital footprint on other platforms like LinkedIn, Instagram, and Snapchat. So how can we utilize social media to transform our patients' lives? Well, I think networking is a great example. Take at this conference. I know that there's some hashtag tweetiatricians in the audience. My, my iWatch is like buzzing all the time, which is great. Keep them coming with the mentions. If you'd like to follow me as well, I'm at Lisa Costello WV. Always like to have a little more followers. But at this conference alone, hundreds of people will share messages using the hashtag AP18. And as they say in Hamilton, for those who are not able to be in the room where it happens, by utilizing social media, they'll still be able to gain information from this conference. Another example of networking via social media happened during my time as a leader in the section on pediatric trainees, where I helped lead the social media efforts. We wanted a way to better engage new members. So we thought about having a digital match day celebration to connect with individuals from the very moment they enter the field of pediatrics. And we created the hashtag FutureFap. This campaign has grown over time and has expanded and really has become a celebration to welcome individuals into our specialty. It's a way to network, share ideas, share words of wisdom and encouragement. It's also fun. So if you remember last year's P21 on physician wellness, we want to have some fun as well. And this is a great platform to utilize to have some fun. So another way that we can utilize social media to transform the lives of our patients is through advocacy. So in the summer of 2017, pediatrician leader Dr. Nusheen Aminuddin was inspired by Dr. Esther Chu, an adult emergency medicine physician who encouraged physicians to share messages through video on social media explaining how changes to the healthcare platform could impact their patients using the hashtag doctors speak out. After encouragement to capture her own video by a trainee member, William Burrow, Dr. Aminadine launched a video campaign on social media encouraging fellow pediatricians and other child health advocates to share messages in support of healthcare coverage for children. Messages to hashtag keep kids covered came from all over the country and were shot in various locations, clinics, call rooms, at home, in hotels, at the airport, even in a treehouse. In a short amount of time, pediatricians from 30 states, various subspecialties, different levels of training and experience, different ages and ethnicities, shared hundreds of videos. These videos were authentic, genuine. They illustrated the power of our pediatrician voice. We had stories to tell, and they were powerful, and we utilized technology to share them. A video compilation of the powerful voices of child health advocates speaking up for children was created by an independent group and garnered over 200,000 views. This grassroots effort caught the attention of major media outlets such as the New York Times and Washington Post. Videos were shared by elected officials and celebrities. And as Dr. Aminadine wrote in an AAP News article explaining this effort, I quote, Pediatricians told stories that connected with people. We did what we do every day, educating people and getting buy-in on an important issue. We used the skills we honed through practice, translated them to a different media, 
and amplified the message to a larger, larger audience through social media. Before social media and listservs to connect one another, these efforts were much more challenging, really non-existent, or if they did exist, could not have the broad impact that we've been able to see by utilizing social media. Pediatricians use technology to share these stories and messages. It humanized the issue, and we leveraged that technology to speak up for children and transform child health. Another way that we can be utilizing social media is with education. So Dr. Rhea Boyd and Dr. Wendy Sue Swanson in 2015 spearheaded a 10-minute Twitter storm using the hashtag measles truth. This storm broke out over the topic of childhood immunizations one month after the Disneyland exposure and outbreak of measles. Using the hashtag measles truth, individuals were encouraged to share concentrated vaccine science information. Messages shared from pediatricians, public health and medical societies, and other child health advocates generated enough impact to create a trending topic on Twitter in the US. If you're not familiar with Twitter, that's kind of a big deal. This innovative method to spread information was coordinated by two pediatricians who wanted to impact change while managing busy schedules. Their efforts led to thousands of messages being shared with over 12 million impressions on that social platform. Another example of pediatricians leading with innovation, utilizing existing technology platforms to transform child health. So when deciding on really what to focus on today, I reflected on my hashtag tweediatrician journey. What would I have wanted to know back then when I was entering the space? And what have I learned in regards to social media? Well, I would want to know that the three-point goal is good. That phrase was one I wanted to hear in my basketball career, but also one I wanted to hear in life, because I've always valued the formulation and completion of a goal, as probably most of you do as well. To obtain personal goals, it requires more than an idea. It requires hard work, determination, and commitment. The same is true when we are leveraging technology to transform child health. So here are three points I've learned along the way, which I think have helped me. Number one, you make a difference. So what difference will you make? In James Cousins and Barry Posner's book, The Truth About Leadership, the authors present 10 truths of leadership. The first truth, and everything you do as a leader, is based on the assumption that you matter. Before you can lead others, you have to lead yourself and believe, believe that you can have a positive impact on others. You have to believe that your works can inspire and your actions can move others. The truth is that you make a difference. It's not a question of will I make a difference, rather it's a question of what difference will I make. As pediatricians, I believe strongly that we must make a difference in the space of social media. Physicians, particularly pediatricians, need to be in this space because our patients, families, as well as policymakers, administrators, public health officials, and more are on that space. There's also a significant amount of misinformation shared on social media. And as pediatricians, we can make a difference by promoting science and child health information to inform a broader audience. Social media is a space that can be used quickly to make a significant impact, just as we saw with the measles truth Twitter storm. It can be used to educate patients, families, and the public, to advocate for child health, engage stakeholders, and collaborate with others. Social media is relevant, here to stay, and as we have heard about the other areas, will only continue to grow. A recent 2018 data from the Pew Research Center shows that over 75% of Americans use social media. Close to half of them get health information on social media. And most Americans use multiple social platforms. Facebook and YouTube remain the most popular, but younger Americans are utilizing Snapchat and Instagram more. Platforms like Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and WhatsApp remain popular, particularly for certain demographics, such as college-educated people utilizing LinkedIn, females having a preference for Pinterest, and the Hispanic population preferentially using WhatsApp. When it comes to social media and utilizing technology, remember, 
you make a difference. What difference will you make? Goal number two, be a good digital citizen. Your digital footprint is holistic and accessible, regardless of how good you think your privacy settings are. So before you message, know that HIPAA and professionalism applies to the social space as well. If you would not talk about it in an elevator, you should not be talking about it on social media. As a general rule, ensure there is no identif identifiable patient or family information. Understand and comply with your institution or your practice or your hospital's digital policy. Promote digital professionalism to our trainees and amongst our peers, and be a good digital citizen. Number three, believe in your hashtag selfie. So I've already shared I'm a proud tweetiatrician. I also love taking selfies. So on that note, I think it's time, since we're talking about technology and we've not had yet a tweetiatrician selfie, that we have one. But you all have been blowing up my phone, so it's going to take me a little longer to get in my phone. I'm so excited to tweet that later. You all can retweet it too. But believe in your abilities to impact change as a pediatrician. You do not have to be an expert in technology. You don't have to write code or create applications. You can embrace existing technologies. Find your community, whether it's your practice, your subspecialty, your institution, the AAP, or beyond. Social media creates an opportunity for all of us to find a place to engage. Think about what you want to achieve on this space and pick the platform that is best for you. There are many, so don't be overwhelmed. Have a game plan on what you want to accomplish. At first, you may just want to socially listen. About half the people on social media do. Then once you gain a better understanding of your desired outcomes, you could start to engage, all the while believing in your ability to impact change as a pediatrician. As is the case with our clinical knowledge, we must continue to grow and learn with technology. For those who may not yet be engaging on social media, or perhaps you want to expand your social footprint, ask yourself the right questions to identify what's the best platform for you. What is your current digital identity? What is your end goal? What kind of content will you be sharing? Who do you want to communicate with? And how much time do you have to allocate? Answers to these questions will help you determine what platform is best for you. There are many resources to help as well, including many with the American Academy of Pediatrics, including fellow tweetiatricians, many of my fellow members of the Council on Communication and Media, numerous AAP staff, including our interim CEO, Mark Del Monte, our social media manager, Helene Holstein, and my personal social media mentor, Senior Director of Advocacy Communications, Jamie Poslowski. We really have the opportunity to learn from one another, and that's what excites me about the social media space, because I learn so much from others around the country and the world as how I can speak up for children. Without the encouragement from those teaching and utilizing social media at my first legislative conference many years ago, I'm not sure where my tweetiatrician journey would have landed. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be up here speaking today. But trust me, if I can do it, you can do it. So believe in your hashtag selfie. So perhaps you haven't yet integrated technology into your practice as much as you would like or think you should. But after today and the remainder of the PEDS 21 focused sessions throughout NCE, you will hopefully have better ideas to integrate and leverage technology to improve patient care, educate, advocate, engage, and empower the public and your peers. To make a shot, you have to take a shot. So engage in technology in some way, perhaps learning from today and the rest of this conference how we can embrace it and lead in those innovations. Today, more than ever, I am proud and grateful to be a pediatrician. I'm proud to be a member of the American Academy of Pediatrics. And I'm proud to be a hashtag tweetiatrician using social media to network, advocate, and educate to advance child health together. By embracing technology, our efforts to impact child health can be amplified to engage and impact 
a broader community. So hopefully my three-point goal was good. You make a difference, be a good digital citizen, and believe in your hashtag selfie. Technology is and will continue to be an integral part of the movement of medicine. So how are we going to leverage technology to transform child health? Because you will never know when you'll be caring for that seven or eight-year-old who is inspired to look up what it means to be a pediatrician because of the way you practice pediatrics and led in innovations. One day, she may even have the chance to share her experiences at a conference for the professional home of pediatrics. So let's go. Thank you.